In school, we learn that square root 2 is irrational. And sometimes, if we're lucky, we learn the classic proof that it is irrational, attributed to the ancient Greeks. So in this video, I'm going to do the classic proof and then an alternate proof. The classic proof, uh, you probably have seen this before, but I'm pretty sure you haven't seen the alternate proof that I'm going to show you. There are similarities between the two, that's why I want to do them together. So for the classic proof, I need a lemma, and let's say p is prime, p is a prime number, and a, b are integers, then if, if p divides a times b, then either p divides a or p divides b, p divides b, or both. Okay. So this is a very useful thing to uh, know, and uh, the classic proof relies on this. Note that it's not true if p is not prime. So for example, 10 divides 6 times 35, but 10 does not divide 6, and 10 does not divide 35, you see. In particular, I'm interested, of course, in the case when p is 2, and in this case, well, if 2 divides AB, then, as we know, 2 divides A, or 2 divides B, or both. And let's make this even a little bit more special. 2 divides M squared, where M is some integer. Well, then, it must be that 2 divides M. But, okay, 2 divides m times m, and 2 divides m, but 2 also must divide this m, because m equals m. They're, these two are the same m, so if 2 divides this m, then 2 divides that m, right? So 2 divides m here. So, okay, um, what can we conclude from this? Okay, so we can conclude that 2 divides m, but also that 4 divides m squared. So if p divides m squared, then we know p divides m, and p squared divides m squared. Okay, this is a very important series of facts, which is the basis of the classical proof. So now the classic proof goes by contradiction. So let's, let's assume, assume this is possible. There exists m and n such that um, m divides n uh, squared is 2. So m over n is a rational number, and the square is 2. And furthermore, we assume m n is equal to 1. The GCD, the GCD is equal to 1. This is always possible, because if I have two numbers, a over b, um, and they're not reduced, then I can write them in a reduced form, m over n, where the GCD is 1, they are co-prime. Okay, that's always possible for rational numbers. So we're going to use this fact, put a star here, because this is going to be where the contradiction happens. Okay, so let's expand this out. m squared is 2n squared. And so therefore, because of this 2 here, we know that m squared is even. And so 2 divides m squared. So from the lemma that we did above here, where here, this stuff that we just <laughs> did right there. Okay, is so from there we know that 2 divides m and uh, 4 divides m squared. So, okay, 4 divides m squared, that means 4 divides 2 n squared. Because, of course, if 4 divides this side, then 4 divides this side. So, 4 divides uh, this expression. So, f there must be a 2. There's two 2's on this side, 2 times 2, but there's only one 2 on this side. So, there must be a 2 that divides this part here, n squared. So, 2 divides n squared. But again, from this really useful lemma up here, uh, this means that 2 divides n and, well, we, we won't need the other fact, but 4 divides n squared, just in case you want to know that. But this is the important one. Okay. So, 
we have two divides m and two divides n. That's a problem because now we have a common factor. Common factor. A common factor. M and N have a common factor of two. Okay, what's the problem here? Well, we have assumed that the common factor is one, that they're in their reduced state. So what this means is that it's not possible to write this fraction in a reduced form. So this can't be a rational number because any rational number can be written in a form that's has a GCD one of the numerator and denominator. All right, so let's conclude this proof. So this is a contradiction. Okay, and so therefore, it's not possible to do something like this m over n all squared is two, that's not possible. And root two is not a rational number. There we go. And now for an alternate proof that root two is irrational. I'm going to need the following fact that x squared equals two has only one positive solution. So uh, what I mean is that x is greater than zero and there's going to be only one of them. Um, and this is something we need to prove. So let's take two possible roots of two and see what happens if we think of them as different than what? Well, x squared minus 2 equals 0 is the equation they both have to solve. Okay, And then if I plug this in, I have x1 squared minus 2 equals 0 and x2 squared minus 2 equals 0. So I can subtract these two and get x2 squared minus x1 squared must be equal to zero. And if I factor this equation, I have x2 plus x1, x2 minus x1 equals zero. Now we assumed that these are positive solutions, right? So x x1 and x2 are greater than zero. We're trying to see if that's possible for for there to be two positive solutions. So this number here is positive, but then in order to get zero here, this must be equal to zero, and therefore x1 must be x2. So no, you can't have more than one positive solution. Uh, the positive root is unique. There you go. Positive root is unique. The alternate proof begins much the same way as the classical proof. M and N are positive integers or natural numbers. And we can assume that the GCD of M and N is 1 because we want the fraction to be reduced. Any rational can be reduced to its most reduced form. And so we assume, all right, let's say it's possible to have a rational root of two. So then this equation would be true. And we end up with m squared is two n squared like this, this equation. So, so far it's the same, but now the proof starts to get different and very interesting in its own way. We have a magic factor that we will add to both sides we add this m squared minus 4mn plus 2n squared to both sides of this equation here. And we get this. And the interesting thing about this is that it can be factored like so. And in fact, the right hand side is a perfect square. So this is very interesting because I can write this like this. Let's divide both sides. 2n minus m all squared over m minus n all squared is 2. Now compare this. Well, let's see, not this one, but this one. Compare this to this. It seems that I have a different root of 2. <laughs> so let's take stock of this. So we have 2n minus m over m minus n and this one, m over n. These are two 
different roots of two. Well, we I don't know that they're different, but we're going to try to prove they're, they're either different or the same. They look different, but is this even possible? I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, ah, well, this one here is the negative uh, root, and this one's the positive one, right? Well, we're going to prove that that's not true. So we'll call this root star and this root star star, and let's start to analyze them. The first thing we note is that because... Uh, because m squared over n squared is 2, that means that uh, m must actually be bigger than n uh, because uh, the, a root of a number bigger than 1 is also bigger than 1. So the denominator must be bigger than the numerator. So I have this inequality so far. But I will also have this here. Uh, m is less than 2n. Why not? Why Why can must I, I have this? This one we know is true, but why this? Mm, well, let's assume otherwise m greater than or equal to 2n. Let's say that's true. Okay, so square both sides. We have m squared is 4n squared and m over n. Sorry, m is greater than or equal to 4n squared. m m squared over n squared is greater than or equal to 4. But that contradicts this here. That's impossible also. OK, so we know by contradiction and by logical thinking that this part here is also true. So this is uh, our inequality from which we will derive the properties of this fraction here on the left hand side star. Okay, let's mm, subtract n from all these parts. n minus n less than m minus n less than 2n minus n. And I end up with 0. m minus n less than n. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay, now let's use this. Let's use this. First of all, 2n is less, uh, 2n is bigger than m. So this up here, okay, I'll, I'll write it again. m minus n, let's use some colors. Because of this, this is positive. Do you see that? And because of this here, actually, I can use a different color for that. Let's try a different color. Because of this here, okay, the this part here, this, this, then this is positive also. <laughs> and so star is positive. So it is not a negative root of 2. This here star is not a negative root of 2. It's a positive root of 2. Okay, so that really, when I saw that part, I thought, wow, okay, that's starting to get really interesting. That's what's going on here. Well, there are two cases. Case one, star and star star are different positive numbers. Well, uh, that leads to a contradiction because we see here that um, when you square star, you get two. And when you square star star, you get two. <laughs> So that can't be because you can't have two different positive roots of two. We just proved that uh, earlier. So that's a contradiction. So positive root of two is unique. So that's impossible. And the other possibility or the other explanation that we may have for this phenomenon is the following. Star and star star. So here's star and here's star star. Star and star star are the same number. Well, we proved here, this is the, the other part of this inequality. You thought, well, what do I need the other part for? Well, we do need it. Look at this. This is less than this. We have shown that m minus n is less than n. So the denominators are not the same. The denominators of those two are different. And how can that happen? 
Well, if they're the same number, but the denominators are different, well, it must have, something like this must have happened, okay? I have here, let me write those two numbers down again. So I have here a number that looks like this. I'll write the factors, you know, sort of stylized like a square. And I cancel something out in m over n, and that gives me something a little bit smaller here and okay now m minus n is smaller m minus n is smaller than n because i canceled something out that's the only way you can have a different denominator uh, but it being the same rational number something was canceled but of course this is a contradiction this contradicts the fact that the GCD of M and N is 1, which we said from the very beginning. And so no such cancelling is possible. <laughs> and so in every case, we are led to an inescapable contradiction. It's amazing. So there cannot be, so there cannot be numbers M and N, uh, natural numbers such that M squared over N squared is 2. This cannot... It cannot be, and so root 2 is not a rational number. Very, very beautiful proof. It's got a lot of depth to it. And I am especially interested in your thoughts and comments. Let me know, tell me what you think about this alternate proof in comparison to the uh, classic one that everyone studies. It's uh, more complicated, but I think it's very beautiful in its own way, and it, it really makes your head kind of turn uh, around like 180 degrees at some point, thinking, whoa, what just happened here, you know? So I'd be interested to hear what you think of this alternate proof. And I will see you next time.